Yeah, look, things have settled down, which is um, a welcome relief. Um, we had the live fire going back about seven days ago now um, with the, um, the Chinese military actually surrounding the island of Taiwan, um, but in particular was the threat to uh, international shipping. Uh, with the Taiwan Strait being such a prominent waterway. Um, just to give your listeners an appreciation, um, the, the strait there between mainland China and Taiwan is about 180 kilometres wide. Um, and about in the first seven months of this year, 50% of all the containerized uh, vessels in the world had actually passed through that at some stage during that period of time. So it's a very important um, passage of water and one that's uh, critical to the international trade sector. And do we know how this all fizzled out quite quickly um, off the back of the Chinese military action, obviously stirring up some fears in the sector? Yeah, so it was business as usual, according to the shipping lines that we've spoken to. Um, so they, um, they've been able to maintain their schedules. And um, I think there was just a huge relief from all that, um, that the military action did cease when it, when it did. Um, what happens going forward, um, who knows? We've had other issues such as the Suez Canal blockage and now internally with the likes of foot and mouth disease. Um, how are we situated in terms of the freight sector in general at the moment? Yeah, look, we've got congestion at major ports around the world. Um, you know, you highlighted a really good example with the Suez Canal, although, you know, it's um, at the other end of the world from where we are, we did feel the effects um, because it affected global trade and uh, everything is just so in interconnected. I think we've experienced, um, you know, over the last couple of years with COVID, lockdowns um, and all the impacts to shipping, just how fragile our supply chains are and it's really been tested. Um, at the moment, we've seen uh, increased congestion at some ports around the world um, uh, largely to do now with um, industrial action. So um, we had the situation ongoing in the US, uh, particularly on the West Coast, uh, but now in Europe too, Germany is experiencing issues with industrial action, something that they haven't seen for 40 years. We're hearing from good sources that the UK uh, will also be experiencing uh, some more industrial action, and even here in Australia, uh, a week or so back, we had an issue with um, the Union and um, Spitzer, who operate a lot of the major tugboat services around the country. Uh, they too were facing industrial action, and that will go before the courts um, later in the year. So um, on top of um, ongoing illness with COVID around the world, including here Australia and affecting port operations, uh, we've got other factors that are now having an impact as well. Um, you mentioned foot and mouth disease. Um, yeah, our biosecurity agencies have got their hands full. Um, so that's taking resources um, uh, to international airports to look at passenger traffic coming from Indonesia in particular. Um, and we've got some concerns that that might be taking limited resources away from servicing um, the cargo sector. Uh, we've got a situation now um, where it can take several weeks um, for uh, the Department of Agriculture to get uh, officers in place to do inspections. And that too is having huge impacts on importers um, and costing uh, hundreds of thousands of dollars in container detention fees for the delay in returning empty containers back to nominated facilities um, as contracted by the shipping lines. So um, yeah, all in all, it's, um, it's a difficult time for the international trade sector and it looks as though it's gonna continue for some time.